I'm Bad Brad Berkwit from America. I'm Gore Depp from Canada. And we welcome you to our show, Last Stop, the Twilight Zone show. <laughs> Folks, is that not the coolest guitar riff ever? One of the best TV show themes ever, too, I think. All right. Well, first of all, Gordon, who was across the screen, I feel like I could go like this and touch him, go into the Twilight Zone, <laughs> had a birthday yesterday. So when you leave comments on there, even though it'll be belated, let's wish him a happy birthday. I can't sing like him. He's got the voice. I can't sing. So how did your birthday go yesterday? Good. And as, as we discovered last week, I was born the year the show started. Yes. So it's in my DNA. It's like in my blood, even though I didn't see it till after. I don't think I saw it as a one-year-old. It would have been too much, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great, great, great coincidence. Well, that's cool. That's cool. And again, happy. I said it to you Thank yesterday, you. so it's not Thank related. Uh, as well, we got good news, folks. Uh, Ann Serling who is Rod Serling's daughter. He had two daughters, Jody and Ann. Ann is coming on a couple hours on my show, The Bad Red Berkwood Show. Very cool. And she saw Gordon, my show last week when we did the debut of Last Stop, the Twilight Zone show, and she enjoyed it. She loved our opening that Mel, my buddy Mel did for us. So that's gonna be like wicked, wicked cool. I know Gordon's yeah. gonna be, try to dial in on the Zoom, but I'm gonna block him because he ain't coming <laughs> on this one. I got her order myself on this yeah. one. But, but folks, she is going to come on the show with us. So she's going to be a special guest. As I mentioned in our debut show, we're going to have special guests. So did you hear anything about, from your end, did you hear anything about uh, Twilight Zone, what we did? Yep. Yeah, I, I, I discovered a lot of closet Twilight Zone fans I didn't know existed among okay. the Spoon fans, which is great because... Uh, you know, it's one of those shows when you grow up, you think, I'm the only one who knows about this. It's one of those secret pleasures, right? That, um, there's the dog barking right now. Um, that Twilight obviously... Zone fan. Is that Lucas saying, do you like Twilight Zone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's got an opinion on everything. <laughs> Want me to close the door? I don't care. Anyway, so it's one of those guilty pleasures that, of course, later on you find out that a lot, a lot of people were watching, you know, and then it became mainstream, but, uh, I was happy to see that a lot of fans um, loved it as much as I did. And um, I don't you know, feel so alone. <laughs> good, good. Well, and there's a lot out there. My followers yeah. on Twitter loved it. Also, if you didn't know folks who looked them up, Gord is the lead singer of the hit band, The Spoons. We don't talk about it a lot because we try to keep yeah. what we both do separate out here, but it is relevant. And I have to tease him because I was going to mess with him yesterday. But if you go on YouTube, there's a clip of him and Rob, who's in the band or was in the band. Is yeah, he in the band the now? Player. Yeah, the okay. old keyboard player. The original keyboard player. Right. There's a, like an eight-minute clip when you guys were like all of like 19, 20, 21 tops hosting John Major's show. You were filling in. I saw it. You had the hair up the hair down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were, you were having it in the buttons. And I, was, I loved it. What a great clip. So check that out, folks. Yeah. All right, without further ado, let's get into this episode of Last Stop, The Twilight Zone Show. So today, Gordon and I will be reviewing the second episode, which was One for the Angels. It on October 9th, 1959, it starred Ed Wynn and Murray Hamilton. It was written by our man, Rod Serling, as the first one was, and it was directed by Robert Parrish. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Gord for the synopsis and likes and dislikes. Okay, the synopsis of the show, it's, it's, it's a completely different thing than the first one, which is more science fiction. This one goes to the more human and even a little bit comedy side of, of, of Rod's writing, but it's pretty well about a sidewalk salesman. Very old America and he has a date with death who comes to see him and says it's time to go he really doesn't want to go and he because he is such a great salesman is able to barter his way into a little deal that 
he could make the pitch of a lifetime. A pitch is like a sale, like the pitch is product, whatever it is. And he does it. And he's able to buy some more time. He thinks he could fool death with you. Of course, he can't. And um, he calls this pitch one for the angels because that's where eventually he's going to be going with death. But it's, it's, it's kind of a different one um, because it's so human, you know, and, and comedic, like I said. A couple of little things. I, I love the first product he's selling. L lots of likes on this, even though the acting is a little bit, you know, tie in cheek, you know. Um, the little robot he's, he's selling at his table on the sidewalk. If you look at it carefully, it, they, they kind of attached it later, I think, is the uh, Twilight Zone eye. It's on each robot. It's kind of a cool little thing. I don't know if that was, I'm pretty sure it was intentional. Um, very likable character, Edwin. I, I remember him from, from uh, Mary Poppins. He was Uncle Albert. I recognize that face. He's like a real vaudeville kind of guy. He, very, he was in vaudeville. Yeah. In vaudeville. Very cool character. And he gets a second chance. He's a friend of children. You know, I think Rod, once again, is showing his love of the common man, of the underdog, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Especially in the face of death or science or that kind of thing. And, and as, as stories, even though sometimes they're very frightening, he shows that the good hearted can sometimes beat the odds, you know, beat death, beat the twilight zone, beat the dark side. So there's a, it's a hope in this, which I really like. Sort of a bit of comedy and humanity mixed in with the science fiction and the, and the, and the scary stuff. Um, it's, this episode is almost family friendly in a way. Mm -hmm. You know, the first one is very science fiction. This one is like, okay, bring, bring the whole family around the TV set because Rod's got you know, kids and toys and, right. and uh, a very likable main character. I love that part about it. Um, I'll see Rod's love of the nostalgic old America, you mm -hmm. know, the sidewalk salesman, you know, yep. the flim flam man, the, you know, the old way of doing things. We see it all through the episodes. Like, you know, when he goes to revisit his childhood, he goes back to his hometown, you know, that's kind of a safe place that I think Rod really adored and that we do too. And I know some I of your favorite episodes, you know. I agree. Um, great writing, very clever, very, very sort of chop chop, like almost like, you know, a comedic kind of thing. Um, right. Great music score again by Bernard, Bernard Herman. Bernard Herman again. again, your man. What I found out, it, he, it has to do, I guess, because he's selling the little space man. It's something, yep. something that's called the Outer Space Suite. And he yep. has little pieces that he throws in. I, I mean, his music is always great and it works really well here. Uh, great editing at the end of this thing. If you see it where, he, where he's pitching death on his product, he actually wins him over, right? He's pitching mm -hmm. this, I think it's the, a silk, a fake silk tie. It's like, yep. Anyways, they keep cutting back to the, the girl lying in bed. Who got it's hit? Sort of, who got hit because he tried to, he tried yeah. to get over on him. And she said, well, I got to take another person. It was the little yeah. girl. And of course, he steps up and says, okay, I'll, 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 I'll you know, I'll, I'll honor my agreement. But this great editing between the pitch and the girl lying in bed back yes. and forth as they come to midnight and they have to decide either way. And this goes to show that the Twilight Zone can touch your heart and make you smile too. There's some moments I laughed in this. It's very mm -hmm. sort of, even though you talking about, you know, meeting death, it's very um, whimsical and sort of touching in a way. So I, I like that about it a lot. Um, like I say, the notion that the good hearted are exempt sometimes from these things, because there's a lot of episodes where there's greedy people, mm -hmm. you know, evil people, and they get what they deserve. But once in a while, there's an episode like this where the good-hearted, the simple person, the regular Joe, you know, is treated fairly, even in the Twilight Zone. Well, you know? it's funny you said that. I want to piggyback on a comment you said about the greedy and all that stuff. You know, I, I thought Deb and I watched these together. We've seen them all, but I, I remember them, you know, really, really well. So as we're doing the reviews of the shows, and then I'm taking notes, I said, Debbie and I actually almost said it to each other at the same time. We said, in today's society, because it's just the, the humanity is like, I'm not saying it's not there, but in a lot of cases, it's not yeah. there. So we looked at each other and we said, would somebody have done that today? Or would they, would they do what Edwin say? Take me, take me now. Yeah. Or would they say, no, okay, take her, take her. That's fine. Yeah. You know, it's almost like people, uh, you, you hear these stories on the news, people go into other states and, and jump in a line to get a COVID shot instead of a first responder or somebody that's yeah. supposed to get that type of selfishness. So I was like, I wonder if that could, if you would have people today that'd be like, you know what? Not like Edwin was, cause that, that actually, as you said, that touched me when he said, oh no, cause he got, he thought he got over on him. Oh, I'll give you the pitch in two, three years. He said, yeah. oh no, you, now you made me do this and she gets hit by yeah. a truck. Okay. Yeah. And I think it really shows Rod appreciation of common man and, and the pure, you know, yes. and the, 
the good because a lot of episodes are about those other greedy people and they yeah. really get what they deserve, right? They sure and, do. And like you say, of course, he you know he barters with Death and he he actually convinces them. You see Death's face face like getting drawn in by his pitch. And with and he's sweating, he's sweating. His hair is coming down. <laughs> yeah, that's I love great. Yeah. But of course, in the end, you can't beat Death. But but Ed or Lou is the character goes yeah. willingly with them because. He, you know, he, he he saved the girl, and he he, you know, he fulfilled his bargain. Yes, you know, yep. well, he's not gonna, you know, I, I think it's very, very cool. And I like at the very end, he sort of picks up his box of of products, it it's holds it up, yeah, and he says, "Well, you know, what do you bring us? But you never know. Yeah, you know, you might need some of this up there. Yeah, yep. I keep doing my pitch in the, in the afterlife, and that there you go. It's kind of a there smile moment too. Yep. You know? So did you get a kick out of like I did when he, he lifted it up and it had like the legs on it and it folded up? I was like, that's so cool. I would love to have something like that. <laughs> okay. Well, let's now do some trivia and facts and see if I can get Gord on this. Did you know that Edwin's son is a very famous actor named Keenan Wynn? Did you know no. that? No. Okay. Well, I'm... That, that's a fact. Now, I may be off on this, and I may not, but I couldn't find anything to the contrary. So, folks, Twilight Zone fans out there, mm -hmm. or and I don't mind if you leave us a comment and correct us on something because we could make a mistake. And sometimes the Internet's not always right, as we know. But they may be the only father and son who were in the Twilight Zone in ep opus, I should say opposite, uh, separate episodes. Oh, really? Yeah. Keenan Wynn was in an episode that was aired in 1960, the second season, called A World of His Own. And that's his son, Keenan Wynn. Wow. Now, Murray Hamilton, who played Death. Did you, do you know, Gord, what the first US blockbuster, summer blockbuster movie was in 1975? And it started the trend forever? The blockbuster? 1975. It was Jaws. Yeah, yeah, Jaws was the first. I know that fact. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Now, you, did you know Murray Hamilton played Mayor Vaughn in that? He was the one that didn't believe the shark and he didn't want to, if he was around with COVID, it would have been the same thing about opening up. He wanted to open up the beach. Yeah. And, all that. And, and actually, that's a parallel with COVID. Jaws was, this, was COVID, where the mm -hmm. governors here in the United States and other countries want to open up, you know, yeah. open up and forget about everything. So he was Mayor Vaughn in that. And just out of curiosity... Because Deb and I always, when we watch old shows, old shows are old black and white. Mm -hmm. We always say people kind of look different back then. Not just not just in black and white, but just people as human beings look different yeah. as, as we evolve. How old do you think Murray Hamilton was in that episode? You know what? I bet you're very young. But he looked like a, a, a businessman, right? Yes. He's probably in his, like, I don't know, late 20s, 30? No, he, actually, he was 37. Yeah, oh, but he still, he looked... He, they, 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 just like in the first episode where the guy played the general, there's certain types that look like G-men, a lot of government men or, you know, the guy in the suit, very official, you know, he very, uh, the, he has a look about him. He looked completely different in Jaws. You might not even recognize him anymore. Yeah, I saw he, him. yeah he was old. He actually yeah. partaked in the, the after hours beverages, which <laughs> aged him a lot. <laughs> now, he was also in, in The Graduate. Remember that movie? He was in The Graduate, Dustin Hoffman. Yeah. He sure was. He was also, I want to say he was in... I don't know why I'm thinking he was in The Hustle with Paul Newman, but I could be wrong. Yeah, you're that. right. He was. He was. He was. Yeah. Okay, because I know George C. Scott was in it. Because didn't George C. Scott, we're kind of going to talk, but I think George C. Scott had that line when he said, you owe me money, because he was, uh, it was Paul Newman yeah. opposite Jackie Gleason. Okay, so that's my trivia and facts for today. You got anything for me? No, you got, you covered them all, really. I There wasn't that much really, you know, strange in this one that I could find. Like like I said, maybe the, the little robots, which... Uh, which uh, with the Twilight Zone eye on it, and then then Bernard Herrmann's soundtrack, which is you know sweet out of space, sweet. So a lot of space hints, and I I think that would draw people in as well because I mean tonight not, now we see a little robot, it's, well, whatever, right? But back then that was a big deal because that was just sort of a glimpse of the future, which which goes through lots of stuff in in um in in Rod's episodes. He's always tug at war with the nice nostalgic past, you know, like you know back in hometown might want to name some names from the shows coming up uh, but and then the advent of the future and science and space travel and everything it's always sort of hovering in between right and all that stuff was very new and strange to the audiences now it's you know 
our, our kids may watch this and go, oh, what's the big deal? But right. I think you and I still feel that sort of buzz, you know? Oh, yeah. When you see the, the robot, uh, yeah. wind up robots and, and things like that, and you get drawn in that we used to back then. So I could, I, could, I could feel what it was like, you know, for the audiences back then. To... And, and I'm going to say something, you, a word that you used a couple of times and I actually had a note here, nostalgia. So being a New Yorker, I didn't grow up in New York City. I grew to New York City people. I was upstate New York, but I really wasn't. I was only 20 minutes from the Bronx. But yeah. if you don't live in New York City, in uh -huh. then you're, you're in Buffalo to them. But the two things that touched me was, Back in the day, I'm born in 1968, and I, I lived there from 68 to 75. I used to go into the city a lot with my dad because um, he knew a lot of people in New York City. And you'd see people talking on the stoop. And it, as the kids, how Ed Wynn, yeah. Lou, Lou Bookman, his character, Louis, I think it was Louis J. Bookman, he would sit on the stoop and they would talk. You would see a lot of that back in the day. But the also the other thing that touched me, and, and I know you got your kids are growing, and my son is in his 30s now, but the nostalgia of seeing kids doing something today that many kids would be like, that's boring. Using yeah. their imagination to play. They didn't have the cell phone. They didn't have the video games. They didn't have the game where in the house. So they had to play outside and use yeah. their imagination. Yeah. And that yeah. touched me too. Yeah, because we lived it, right? I mean, we yes. moved on. We, we, later on, we, we, you know, we, we got into computers like, like everybody else and, and um, you know, whatever else there's now. But we, we, we're lucky to have experienced that stuff of Rod's world, right? Yes. That's why it still means, a, so it's not just a, a science fiction show. It's actually a slice of our life in a way, you know, all, it, it, he's showing us little glimpses and, and the pictures of what we grew up on, including our fears, you know, not just the, the happy stuff, the fears, yep. the, the tugging at the heartstrings to want to go back to that time. You know, there's some great episodes coming up where he lets us go back in time. It's something we wish you could all do. And, and, and live that simpler time. Yeah, so I love that mix of things. Mm -hmm. You know, if Rod had just written straight science fiction or straight horror or this, it would have been tired. And you know, I got tired real fast, but there's always a, a message in there. No matter how creepy it is sometimes or how dark or strange, there's always a message in there and um, something, you know, to take away from it rather than, you know, you can be scared but learn something at the same time. Right. You know, somebody sent me a Twilight Zone fan sent me uh, in my DM on uh, Twitter, sent me an article, and I was like, wow, I didn't even know this. And I, and I read it, it was a pretty lengthy article, I gotta send it to you. Believe it or not, you know who Emmett Till was? Are you aware of the Emmett Till story, the young, young uh, black boy that was killed in the 50s? They said that he, I think that they said he, he did like, whistled at a white girl, son down south, it was, it was oh, a yeah. racial, like the Klan, they, they killed, it was brutal, it was horrible. Yeah. But they said, that Rod saw that and he wanted to do something different, but the censors wouldn't let him. So he came up with the, I'll send you the article, came up with the Twilight Zone. Um, and that's where he went. Cause as you know, he's got a lot of episodes we're gonna be reviewing that talk about racial equality and stuff like that. He was so mm -hmm. far ahead of his time. That's why very smart that way, right? I mean, he said, yes. I'm gonna get this, this, um, this boat here and, and, you know, say it's a, what it is, but he can, he can bring out all his beliefs and, yes. and convictions and stuff very cleverly through episodes, you know, like this one or whatever. Like, a, yeah, no, that's 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 a, that's a genius. Yeah, <laughs> a, he he, he has a big master plan, you know. Absolutely, and that's why I said at the beginning our debut that you know I love him too for his his being a great humanitarian. So, all right, well, hey, folks, that's episode number two. We reviewed once again one for the angels. It starred Ed Wynn and Murray Hamilton, aired October 9th, 1959. Again, leave your comments below our video. Make sure you hit the button in whatever corner it is and subscribe. We greatly appreciate it. We love your feedback. If you have suggestions for things, we're going to be going all different directions besides we're just reviewing them and we're going to have guests on. So I'm going to end it here because I got to get ready for this interview that I'm psyched. And I'm oh, blocking you. You're not zooming in on my freaking interview. <laughs> so you could be there in spirit, Gordon. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. I'm going to say goodbye from the United States for now. You can say goodbye from Canada. And we're goodbye out. Goodbye from here. Canada. <laughs> <laughs> take care, folks. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, folks. I'm going to take the hit. I have no problem being the one. When I... Logged off, Gordon said, hey, you forgot <laughs> to do the, do the rating system. This is new. This is a little yeah, bit of reality TV here. You're excited so, about talking to Ann. That's why. Yeah, I'm excited talking about Ann. 
So we always close out with a rating of the episode. I think Gordon went first last week. So I want to thank my better half, Debbie, for hooking me up and going to Michael's uh, Arts and Crafts and getting me paper and numbers. So my <laughs> rating for this episode is, is it the right way? Yeah, okay. Is a six. What do you got for me? Which is an upside down nine. I, I'm, I'm always one below you. I don't know why, but you know what? I, to me, I love all the shows. So I got to sort of find a, you know, a medium ground. This is like an average show to me, you know? Okay. That, that's why I would say even a, a four or three is not bad, but right. there's, there's, a, there's a range, right? And I think this is a good average show. It's, it's, it's light, you know, it, it doesn't get as deep as some of the other ones, but I enjoyed it thoroughly anyway. Okay. Well, there you go. Like I said, we'll get, we'll get the habit of this. I'm the, I'm the one that's uh, supposed to know that off, off the uh, cuff, but see, the, the, the rock star over here had to tell me, so hey, forget about it. All right, on that note, we're going to close out again. Right. Say goodbye to everybody.